Hello, Internet, and welcome to the show. My guest today is an actress best known for working in the horror genre. She starred in the horror film Abigail Haunting, which is available on Amazon, and is also one of the stars of the upcoming feature film The 13th Cross, which I did the film score for. This episode was mostly about the film industry, so lots of movie talk in this one. Please give it up for Chelsea Yurkovitz. One, and we're live. So, man, uh, still will not have Joe on the program, but I will have everyone else from the 13th Cross on for him. So, Chelsea, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. You're one of the the first people. Uh, well, I've actually had a couple people reach out to me of wanting to be on the show, but um, it's it's been more like people I've you know talked back and forth with about being on the show. But it's, it's you know it's it's nice to just get a message out of the blue like, hey, how come you had uh, other people from the Thirteenth Cross on and not me? I'm like, I'm gonna get to it. Uh, but it's <laughs> uh, it's great to have you on. And um, kind of what I was thinking. Great to <laughs> finally like um, have a conversation because I feel like I know you really well because of the hours and hours I watched that yeah, film. Yeah, but it's kind of funny over. because like it's kind of funny because like when I was thinking about coming on the show earlier today like I was thinking about like hmm I wonder if he's like seen it and I was I was like going to ask you that and then I was like wait he scored it so I think he's seen it more than most of us probably will. <laughs> yeah, no, I I saw that film more times than uh like mo- way more times than you think. And so like for yeah. me I'm very familiar with um like the the timbre of your voice, your your body movements, kind of just I I loop the scenes over and over. Yeah, that's so weird. Over. That's like super weird. And you know, I've seen it too, because uh, I wasn't gonna see it till the premiere, which is on like it's in like a week and a half, and I'm super super excited for that. But um, I was like, it was like really funny because I contacted Joe about I know these other podcasters and we were like talking about how they wanted to like do a review of the film and stuff. And so I talked to Joe and I was like, Hey, um, these people like want to review it. Like, should I put you in contact with them? And they're like, Joe was like, well, if you're the contact, like you can just send them like this screener link and they'll go from there. And like, I was about to do that. And then I was like, wait, like, this is a link to the film. Like I'm going to like watch it. <laughs> and so I did. And it's fantastic. Let me tell you. Um, I'm really excited for it to, to get out into the world. Now, this was uh, your first uh, full feature film role that you did like, um, th- in terms of, in terms well, of like the timeline of when you did film. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had worked on feature films before, but just like I never really had more than like a couple lines. And so mm-hmm. um, this was like different because I mean, I, I did a lot of theater when I was younger, like 12 to 14. So that was like obviously a really long time span of like working on the same project. But ever since I've been in film and it had been like. I want to say like four or five years I had been in film um, before I got this part. And that was kind of the the dream that I wanted. Like I, I did a lot of like feature films as like a day player or like a leading role in a short film or, you know, recurring on a couple like, you know, series and stuff like that. But um, and th- that was all like really great. But I that was kind of the dream was to to get a role where I was one of the major characters in a feature film where I was like, you know, there like every day um, and stuff like that so like when I booked this it was like yeah like you know that that dream like came true so but yeah now I've I've been lucky enough to do a handful of those but um yeah this was the first one that I uh, filmed my hits that's coming off but yeah this was the first one that I um that I filmed that I was a, a major character in a feature so it was like it was a dream come true so what, how did you hear about it? did you was it just the casting call like Melanie just you, you saw the casting call online and just went for it or yeah, did you know yeah, somebody? I, I didn't know anybody. Um, I yeah, I just saw the casting call online, and it, like I kind of knew like right from the beginning that it was like you know, my part because I was 19 at the time, and everybody thought that I like looked a lot younger. And I've always liked doing dramatic acting and kind of kind of living on the edge when it came to like films and and the content that's in the films. Like I I won't go like too far, obviously, but um, I've usually you know, been one to, to be like, you know, I'm going to do this like crazy film about this and, you know, like stuff that like my grandparents can't really see. <laughs> I can't have that type of film. And I'm, I'm kind of like known for that, you know, doing like these creepy, like weird dark roles. And so I saw this casting call and they were like, 
we're looking for somebody, I was 19 at the time, we're looking for somebody age 18 to 20 to play 15 in this R-rated thriller, um, and we're only looking out of Utah, and I was like, you know, I was 19, so right in the middle of that age range, and everybody thought I was younger, and I'm known for the, you know, like, weird, edgy roles, and, like, you know, I lived in Utah, so I'm like, this is my part, you know, and I, like, I really, really wanted it, because, like, again, I hadn't, like, done a lead in a feature yet, and... Uh, so I like, it was actually funny because I, I had this monologue for the audition and I was really overthinking it. Like I, I rehearsed it way, way too much and like thought about every, like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And whatever. And then I went to this audition for a totally different film, like two days before I auditioned for the 13th cross mm -hmm. and coming from, you know, like a, a very dramatic acting background, um, doing horror films and stuff like that. I go into this other audition, which was a period piece and, like I was just acting out the scene and it, it wasn't a horror film. It wasn't a creepy film. It was just a, a period drama, but um, just like, because I was so like experienced in like these, these like really dramatic uh, roles. I went into that audition and I, I did the scene like so like really, really intense and really dramatic. And then um, the director of that film was like, okay, uh, I'm going to have you do that again. And I'm just going to give you one note. I'm like, okay. And he goes, less and that's all he said just less and then it kind of hit me like oh yeah like you know some scenes you need a lot of intensity and a lot of energy but like other scenes you don't really need that and mm -hmm. so then I, I did it again and I, I did that I was like oh okay and then I didn't actually get that role but then two days later I auditioned for the 13th crest and I used that same advice like because it was kind of a mellower scene and right. so I I did it and I used that advice you know like I put the intensity only where it needed to be and um then I remember I was like, when I got the word that I got the part, I was like up in like Pine View Reservoir, which is like, it's like up like Ogden Canyon, if you're familiar with Utah at all, um, shooting another movie, or shooting like a short film, and it wasn't even like paid or anything, and um, just like hanging out, and like there's all these like drunk people at the set, and I really like didn't want to be there shooting it, but I really wanted to, you know, be an actor and all that stuff, and uh, so I'm just like, hey, there with all these drunk people, like shooting this like, you know, non-paid short film. And then I got the the call that I was going to be in the 13th cross. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, because like, I yeah, that was like a really cool moment. And then um, I shot that and then I got one in California and went and, you know, did a Hollywood movie, you know, and in California. And then I got another one in Vegas, another one on the East Coast. And now it's like really spiraled and it's just funny to think like two years ago, I was like in this little cabin, like trying to, trying to make a little short film. And then um, the 13th cross came and then it evolved into so much more. So I'm really lucky to be where I am. Do you feel it's a, a bit wild? Cause you've already like shot so many films since the 13th cross and a number of mm -hmm. which have come out. And uh, does it feel weird that the 13th cross is finally coming out after all this time? Yeah, it is weird. And like the 13th cross, like, I don't know, I guess because I, like, did so much else after it, and just, like, it was it was kind of a hard shoot and stuff like that, I didn't really, like, think too much about it after I filmed it, um, and so, like, I, like, I, again, I just saw it for the first time, like, two days ago, and, like, I forgot about so many of those, like, lines and so many of the scenes and stuff like that, so it's, like, it is, like, really weird to, like, go back, you know, to the mindset of, like, two years ago when we are shooting and be like, oh, yeah, like, I remember, I remember these lines and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it is, it is, like, pretty weird. And I feel like I've, I've changed a lot as a person since we filmed that. Like, I remember, like, you know, when I was filming the 13th Cross, I was, like, very, like, insecure and worried about, like, everybody on the set and what they were going to think and stuff like that. And now I'm, like, so, you know, like, it may be a little bit like that, but so, like, mostly not like that and so like I can see a, a huge change in myself as a person since we shot it two years ago and it's like yeah it is like really weird to like watch it now and like see how I've changed as an actor and just think about how I've changed as a person and yeah it's it's pretty trippy I'm excited that it's finally getting out into the world and we just got distribution and all that stuff yeah when's that coming like in a few days uh, at the time of this recording what like a week or something not even oh uh, well the the third the premiere is um, on the 31st, which is in like a week and a half. Um, so uh, that's going to be super, super fun. And me and my friends are going to have a like big road trip down to St. George and see it and stuff, which will be really fun. Um, 
And then I'm not sure when it's going to be available for the public, but we did secure distribution recently. So that is going to like, you know, you will be able, like the public will be able to see it, which is really cool because um, I've been in, in some films that like just go to the film festivals, which film festivals are great, but like it's kind of hard to like just rely on the film festivals because then it's like the only people that can see it are the people that like attend that. And it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to get people to attend those. Right. But um, now that we have distribution, it's going to, I don't know where it's going to be, but I'm assuming like you know, Amazon or somewhere like that. And um, like as someone who's like had other films on those like mainstream platforms, it is like easier like way easier to like get people to watch it, you know, cause it's right. just like in your house, like, Hey, turn on your TV and watch this movie that I made, you know? And, um, a lot of people do. That's why I was kind of, I was kind of surprised about that when Abigail hunting came out. Cause it's like, Abigail hunting is like very scary and, you know, creepy and all that stuff. And I have a lot of like relatives and, and people that always, you know, never liked horror films and stuff like that. And I wasn't expecting them to watch it. And then like they, most of them did. And I was like, I'm like, I was really excited that they like, watched it just because I was in it and like even though it was not something that they would pick to watch and like so I really like that so I think that even though the 13th cross is pretty gritty I think that a lot of the people that I know will still watch it and um hopefully a lot of just the general public will watch it as well I, I think it I think it'll do really well especially after seeing it it's it's pretty it's pretty good yeah, my my wife uh, won't watch it. She is not into the um, the dark and gritty stuff. That is absolutely not her thing. Uh -huh. And um, yeah. truthfully, it's not really my thing either. Like, I'm not really a mm -hmm. horror guy. I'm not really a thriller guy. Like, I can watch it, but I don't necessarily seek that kind of stuff out. But I'm not like one of those people like, oh, no, I'm afraid of it. I'm just like, eh, I mean, you know, it's fine. But it's just, yeah. eh, I, don't, it's I don't gravitate towards it. But I know you're like a big, like, horror fan. Like, what attracts you to horror and uh, that kind of stuff? Um, well, like, honestly, I was growing up, I was never like into horror films and stuff. I like I hadn't really even seen a horror film like in the theater until I was like 15. Um, and I, I liked it a lot. Um, the main the main reason that I do horror as an actor is because I really like being dramatic. And um, I really like the dramatic acting. And that's like, kind of the most the most dramatic you can get is, you know, being in a horror film. Aside from um, theater. So yeah, well, I mean, theater is like is dramatic in a like non realistic way, right? And horror horror films is like as dramatic as you can be while still like being real, you know, being being a person and not a I'm on stage, you know. Right. So like uh, that's why I like it, but also I I just do it because uh, you know as an actor we all have our like little things that people see us as and want to cast us in, and especially with Abigail getting famous and stuff like that, Abigail Hunting. Um, uh, it used to just be called Abigail, so I actually call it that. But anyway, um, I've, now that Abigail Hunting's like getting famous and stuff, like honestly, it's kind of hard to get casting directors to like see past that. Like they're like a lot of times they like won't cast me in something that's like more lighthearted because I'm like known for that, you know. But like people doing a horror film are like, oh, she was in Abigail Hunting, we should right. put her <laughs> in it, you know. And I have like been seeing that, and I mean that I'm I'm just lucky that I it's a genre that I really like. But I mean, like, it's not all the way my choice that I do mostly horror. Like, I would like to do, like, period pieces and coming of age things and other things like that. And I hope that uh, casting directors will be able to, you know, see my versatility at some point. But I do really like doing these creepy things. So um, I hope that continues as well. <laughs> so what are you working on currently? Are you doing anything currently? Or is, you know, with the uh, lockdown, ain't, no. anything being shot? I'm not shooting anything currently because I just, I feel like I did... Between, like, the 13th Cross and, like, all the stuff that I did. So, 13th Cross was, like, shot in, like, summer of 2018. And between that and, like, the summer of 2019, I did, like, so much. I did, like, three features and, like, four shorts or something ridiculous like that. Um, and little commercials and stuff. I was, like, acting constantly. And so, I think I, like, overworked myself because I was I, – I left that, like, last set in the East Coast. Like, even though it was fun, I was, like – so kind of like put off of acting because <laughs> I did it like so much. So um, right now I'm just like, you know, hanging out with my friends and doing like fun stuff and like enjoying seeing these come out and see like, you know, all the work that I did like be released, which has been like really cool. Um, so I haven't, I haven't acted since like last September, but um, like I am signed on to a couple more that I'm like really excited about. And uh they're trying to shoot them like this one of them slated for this fall but i don't know if that's gonna like actually happen because right. of the pandemic but um 
I'm signed on to one that's at the at the earliest is shooting like this fall, and then another one that's shooting like next summer. And um, I think by then I'll be ready to get back into it. And they're I'm really excited about both of those projects, so it'll be uh, really cool. Are you able to tell us anything about them, or is it just a um, hush hush, nothing, nothing? Uh, I can't really say too much, but one of them is another horror film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a it's a ghost do you live? story. Oh huh? no, that's a spoiler. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, do um, you live? Oh, oh well, I I actually, like, I've only read the treatment, not the whole script, so I'm not even entirely sure, but um, uh, it's, an, it's a ghost story, and I'm playing somebody, like, a few years older than I am, which is, like, always a challenge, because it's, it's easier to play somebody that's younger than you, because it's like you've lived that age, and you have stuff to draw from, but, like, playing somebody older, you're, like, not always as experienced as your character, and that kind of makes it, like, hard, but, like, in a good way. Um, so I can't really say too much about that, but I'll tell you it's a ghost story and, um, I'm the lead in it and, uh, it's very, very dramatic and, um, kind of, I want to say like pays homage to, uh, the horror films nowadays, but also the horror films in like, like the nineties or something It kind of reminds me of like that style. And then the one that I'm shooting next summer is, I can't say what that is, but I will say that it's a very, it's a, it's a modern ad- it's a modern adaptation of a very well-known story, and I'm playing a character that everybody has heard of, but I can't say what that is yet. But it's it's really exciting when I can co- when I can come out with that. It's like you guys are gonna be like, oh, <laughs> like is it something that you you know what it is? But the way that we're doing it is, you know, um, different than Wait. that one's actually not a horror film. That's more of a what's um, the genre of the original story? If you had to describe comedy. it. Uh, the, the original story is a fairy tale. I so the original story is a fairy tale, but it's like a modernization of it. Um, yeah. okay. Okay. Made into like a, a rom-com type thing, which I don't usually do like rom-coms. And so like, that'll be fun to explore like a different, a different genre. And it's, it's definitely something that you've heard of. So it's, it's exciting. I was, I was excited to yeah, get that's, that. That's the call. one I can watch with the wife. I, I can do, I do, I do rom-coms with her. Yeah. It, that, that one will be very family friendly. The other ones like, Probably not, <laughs> but that one that one will be uh, something that kids can watch and and uh, sensitive people. <laughs> yeah, sen- sensitive folks like I mean, like I said, I I can handle the horror. I mean, shoot, I had uh, Freddy Krueger was in my dream last night, uh, and so I just beat the <laughs> shit out of him uh, because I'm just like I'm not risking this, bro. Um, but you know, so I'm not like I said, not totally against it. But uh, rom coms, you know, they're 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 fun. You you watch them yeah. with your lady, or I guess uh, in your case, like. Um, you, I don't know, you could watch horror or rom-coms. You can sort of watch whatever. You have the freedom of choice with whatever you want to watch. Um, as far as the film goes, do you have any, like, interesting stories about the set or any remembrances yeah. about the the process that you want to share? I mean, because I, uh, I know Joe in a very, very different context. And um, uh-huh. that he's been on my podcast a few times. I've been on his a couple times. And um, there's just, you know usually just like arguing and bickering between us and then being like, Hey man, I'll do your movie. Cause I need the experience and you need a composer. <laughs> um, By the way, I, I think you did a fantastic job with that. Like, especially with your, as your first like film gig, like I listened to like the whole soundtrack as I was like doing a crossword puzzle <laughs> one time, which is really weird, but I just like had it on in my room and I was like, this is a good film score. Well, thank you. I mean, it was my first time and it was in a massive time crunch. There's, uh, mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this expression in the industry. It's very common in the music industry, but I'm sure you've heard it in, in film as well, where you can do uh, a project, uh, you get two out of the three, uh, fast, cheap, or good, and you yeah. only get two. You don't get all three. And, I, I um, agree with that. And so I tried to um, do all three because I uh, didn't get paid much for it. Uh, yeah. And, um <laughs> Joe put me on this really, really tight time crunch because he wanted to get it uh, out in time for film festivals. Uh, mm-hmm. And then at the time, like, my sister was getting married and I was flying out of town and we had a music video shoot. So, like, I had to do it two weeks earlier than even the tight time crunch because I just wouldn't have time in that two-week period. And so, like, trying to make it good and fast and just in that time frame, uh, I think I did okay. Uh, you know, yeah, listening listening. Listening back to it, I would have liked to have done uh, more with it. But, um, you know, the amount of music I had to do in the amount of time, it's sort of like uh, there's there's certain tracks I'm, I'm proud of and there's stuff I would want to go back and, and redo. Um, but then by that same token, like they got used in like such a different way where I'm like, you know, it probably wasn't even worth it to, to attempt to redo it. Um, 
But I, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad that uh, you seem to enjoy it and Melody seemed to enjoy it. And weirdly, only the girls uh, from the movie are the ones adding me on Facebook. Like none of the dudes. Oh, really? The actors, That's uh, so funny. Uh, yeah, I like to I like to um, know who I'm working with, even if it's like a, a long distance thing like that. Like I, I just think it's like cool to hear like, oh, this person like designed the poster. Like this person like did the music and stuff. It's like, it's kind of cool to like hear that and like like know who they are, even if you like don't meet them in person or whatever. No, I mean, I'm, I'm that same way too. And so I'm, um, really would love to get, uh, Eric on the program at some point, but I don't think we're Facebook friends, but just like, you know, might as well get the trilogy, the trifecta of the mains yeah. in the film. And yeah. I think, um, in terms of where the film really shines is the, uh, the writing of the three main characters and the acting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. all three of you did a really just excellent job and really uh, carried the movie. Um, cause Thank you know, you. with, with a low budget film, like you really, the acting needs to carry it. I mean, obviously you, you need uh, a good script and good dialogue, but I think you guys really elevated it and made it, um, something that, you know, quite good considering all the constraints that you had, you know, budget wise, time wise, cause it wasn't like, like a two week shoot or something just like, you know, it was like busy. a, I think it was like a three, I was like a three and a half week shoot in total. I wasn't there the entire time, but it's like three and a half weeks. Yeah, that is that is uh, just, you know, super intense and like, you know, hats mm -hmm. off to you, especially for like your first time. Like you definitely came off as having a lot of um, experience and like knowing what you were doing where you very much owned the part. And oh, thank you. Uh, in some ways, like felt like the maybe the most believable of the cast. I'm not going to get into, into favorites because uh, <laughs> you know I I like everybody and you know other people might listen. But I think you um, felt the most like oh yeah I know that chick I've seen her around like and I I definitely uh, related to that character a lot in terms of the the realism you brought to that performance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, in terms of like. Uh, stories i think you're asking me if i if i had any stories i have this this actually was the set that i think i have the most like crazy uh crazy stories from i think every set you have like these little behind the scenes you know anecdotes or whatever like oh that was really this person's house or whatever like these short little things but mm -hmm. this is the one that i have like the the long like funny stories from so uh, my favorite one is okay so we're at the table read and um tyler dane who played uh, Adam, the abusive boyfriend. Um, we were like kind of talking after we read the script, and Tyler said to Joe, like, uh, he was kind of telling him that he thinks it would be cool, like, if there was a part in the movie that kind of showed his character, like, in another light or in like a better light, mm -hmm. and kind of suggested, like, why don't we write a, uh, like, an another like a flashback scene or something like that that like shows Adam being nice to Renee basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, so Joe's like, Oh yeah, I'll think about that and stuff like that. And so I was like, yeah, he's not like going to do that. Cause like, <laughs> this is like a script that he already wrote. Um, and then, so they sent me the shooting draft of the script, which is like, basically this, the screenwriter can like send you a bunch of different versions of the script as pre-production mm -hmm. goes along. But once they, once they send you like the shooting draft and they say, it says on there like shooting draft, like that means they can't send you another one. Like that's the one that you're going to use. Right. And so I got the sh I got the shooting draft and the file name like when like when they emailed me the script like the file name was like 13th craft 13th cross shooting draft underscore Chelsea or underscore like Renee or something like that and I was like that's weird that they like named this draft like you know the me draft and I was like kind of confused about that but like I didn't really think anything of it and so um I was just reading this rewrite and kind of making a note of where the changes were and uh, you know if any new lines arose and I saw like near the end that there was like a, a flashback sequence in the film and it actually got cut out of the film, but I, I saw um, the sequence. Know, so don't, 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 don't be looking for it yeah. <laughs> audience. But, um, uh, there, there was a flashback sequence in there of, of Adam, like being nice to Renee and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, that's cool that like, he just like took this, like, you know, guys like suggestion at the table read. And we, I think the whole cast was like, you know, surprised that he, that he actually put that in there. Um, and so I'm like reading it and the scene was, uh, it said like something, something more like doing stuff. And then it's like, Adam gives Renee a gift and then, uh, it says like, it's kind of cheesy, but I think you'll like it. And then like, Ren it said like Renee opens the gift or something like that. And then I have like lines and I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm just like learning my lines. And then, um, we were, that was scheduled to be shot on the first day. Mm -hmm. And so like, 
I'm like I get there on the first day and I we were shooting other stuff and like I never like knew like what the gift was and so I kept like asking people like what's the what's the gift yeah, in that scene where it says I open a gift like what is what are we gonna use for that and like everybody was like blowing me off they were just like oh yeah and they like they'd like get talking about something else and like nobody would answer me like the whole day and then we were like gonna shoot that scene so we all like hiked to the top of this like hill to shoot this because we were shooting at like the top of a hill and so I'm like we're like sitting there and so Tyler gets like this like guitar and like lugs it up the hill and like I still like I do not think anything of this I'm just like okay like maybe they just like want that in the shot maybe it's like a subliminal like this guy is a musician I don't know like I didn't think anything of like why does he have a guitar like that thought didn't (laughs) enter my head um I was just like okay whatever like he has a guitar and so we like start we were like setting up to shoot the scene and I realized that I still didn't know like what the gift was and I mean, I come from theater, and so I've I've been there in those moments where like the the people like forget their prop or something on stage, and and they go, oh, like look at my necklace, and there is no necklace, and like mm-hmm. I've been there, and I'm like, we can't have that, you know. Um, so I'm like, like we don't like what is the gift, and still like nobody would answer. They're just like, yeah, yeah. like nobody would answer, and so I'm like, we don't have like a prop to be the gift, like we need to get one. And then Joe just like finally looks at me and she's like, just just do the scene like you'll see what it is and I'm like oh okay so it's like a surprise or something like whatever and so I turn to Tyler and I'm like do you know what it is and he's like he goes kind of and looks out like mischievous and I'm like what what's like happening and so we like we start doing the scene and then he says his line before I like open the gift or whatever which was like I think it's cheesy but you'll like it or whatever and then he like picks up his guitar and starts like legit like playing me a song and like singing a song like that pertains to me, like, blue-eyed gal, whatever, and, like, I'm, like, wait, this isn't in the script, and, like, he's just, like, singing this, like, whole song, and I'm, like, trying to, like, react, like, in character, and, like, remember, like, what my lines were, I'm, like, uh, okay, like, we're gonna do this, and then they cut, and I'm, like, what was that, and it, so it turns out that, um, they wanted to get your they, reaction to it authentic, they planned on that the whole time, yeah, but, like, they, they wrote me, like, a different script, like, just to prank me, like, that that's why it said like 13th cross shooting draft Renee or like okay. Chelsea or whatever it said, because it's like they everybody on the cast, everybody in the crew had a different script that had this like song in it, except for me. Like they sent me like a different script. Like they got like really like into this. And it was funny because that was like my first day. And so I was like, you know, welcome to the 13th cross. <laughs> like They all like prank me with this like different script. It was like so funny. And then the next day I, brought it up and I'm like that was really funny like what you guys did yesterday and and they're like oh yeah like um you were supposed to say this and this and da, da, da. and they were telling me like all these lines that were in their script but not mine and I'm like well you didn't tell me that yesterday so like I didn't say them but it was like so funny like I thought that was like so funny that they like went to all that trouble to like write me a different script and like send it just to me and then everybody else had like a different one just to like get my reaction or whatever like why he was like singing the song it was funny <laughs> I was like this is you know, welcome to the production. But yeah, it was funny. Yeah, I think I remember very early on in the process, I think uh, Joe showed me that song and uh, there was a couple others that he said, um, if you can incorporate these as motifs into the score uh, so that they all Mm -hmm. tie together. Um, And then I ended up just not having the time and just like, man, I just, I'm too busy. I won't be able to do that. And then none of the songs got used anyway. So I feel much Uh better about not spending the time doing that. Like, oh, let me learn how to play. I'm like, hey, can you send me a chord chart or some sheet music? And I was like, oh, just figure it out. Like, man, I got, I got like 10 days to make this film score. (laughs) Like I have, I don't have time to learn that stuff. Yeah. Um, Um, One of my other like favorite stories from it is, um, I, okay, so there's there's a shot, and in the film, it like it's very, very brief, but we shot a lot more than what was used, and I think just in, in every shot, even if you're like just shooting like a, a B-roll of like a cup or something, like, you know, that takes time, and that's mm-hmm. like, it, it like shots that people don't even notice, like it's, it's, it's a lot, like as somebody like actually making the movie, but anyway, there's this very, very brief shot of, it's like an interior of a car and then me like running out in front of the car to like get away Mm -hmm. and so we were like shooting that and so it's funny because like I mean I've shot other stuff that involves you know like scary stuff or whatever and like usually they'll have like they'll like clue in the neighborhood or like they'll have like police 
on set or something like that to like keep everything like under control. But like, you know, this is Joe's first feature. And like, I mean, uh, like he didn't know stuff like that, like that we should probably like clue in the neighborhood. Um, so like he didn't clue in the neighborhood and like, we didn't have police there. And so like, so like these, okay. So like we're shooting this scene and like all the film, they, we'd already like shot the master and stuff. And so like all of the film equipment were like in the car because it was like the interior of the car. And they were like, it was like a POV or whatever from like in the car. And so I'm like legit, like being chased by this like $80,000 Mustang around this, like you know, just random, like, neighborhood in Provo, and so, um, these, like, random, like, passerbys, like, saw this, and, um, like, so, I, like, did the scene, and it was, like, kind of scary, because it was, like, an actual, like, stunt, like, I really, like, ran out in front of the car, and so, they only made me do it once, and then, uh, I, I went to the window of the car, and they were, like, okay, that was good, whatever, and I'm, like, okay, and, okay, we're wrapped, whatever, and then I, like, got in the car, and, like, drove, and so, these passerbys, like, thought that I was getting kidnapped, because they saw, me like just running out in front of a car and like the car chasing me and then me like stopping and getting in and so they thought I was getting kidnapped like legit and so they like start like chasing like legitimately chasing down the car and we're like who are these people and then like Joe was driving and he like rolls down the window and they like like start like getting in the car like they're gonna like beat up Joe and they <laughs> thought I was getting kidnapped and I was like I, I was like well because I was in the back seat and I'm like I lean forward and I'm like no wait wait like we're shooting a movie like he's because they're, they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, he, he's the director. Like, we're shooting a movie. And, like, I have this, like, big bruise on my face because, like, Renee has one. <laughs> you know, it was, like, makeup. But um, they, like, look at me and I look, like, super wounded. And so they, like, they're, they just, like, look at me, like, super intently and go, are you sure? Are you sure you're okay? And I'm like, yeah, like, we're really shooting a movie. And, like, they're just kind of, like, looking in the car and they see, like, like, a big camera and, like, you know, a, a clapper and all this stuff. But it was, like, so funny. Like, they were, like, trying to rescue me from getting kidnapped, which is kind of, like, were, like really cool. Like, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but, yeah, I just thought that was, like, so funny that they, like, legitimately thought I was getting kidnapped. And they, like, they were, like, getting in the car, <laughs> like, trying to rescue me. And I was, like, he's not kidnapping me. Like, he's a film director. It was really funny. And I think, I think that's, like, everybody's, like, favorite behind the scenes story that like knows me they're like remember that time like you they thought you were getting kidnapped but yeah it was really funny yeah that's um that definitely sounds like something that would happen because i i understand <laughs> when you're shooting the, a, a movie like this on the cheap you're like you might not like call the police and do all that stuff uh -huh. um yeah it was, it was funny because i didn't i mean i didn't even know you were supposed to do that either um and then like i shot abigail hunting like a couple months later and um like we shot that in Vegas and you know, there were guns and lots of dramatic stuff happening, especially at the end of the film. And like, I mean, the whole neighborhood knew what we were doing and like we had police people there. And so I was like, Oh, okay. Like this is what we should have done. <laughs> and then they're Jim Cross. But I um, mean, I think everyone was kind of, kind of new to the feature film game um, at that time. And so like, we didn't know and Joe didn't know. <laughs> and so we like, uh, or maybe he knew, but he didn't like, he didn't do it. But um, <laughs> it was really funny. Like these people were just like chasing us down like, ah, and then they, like, didn't believe me. I was like, no, we're shooting a movie. Are you sure? It was, like, really funny. Yeah, no, that is that is uh, very, very wild. So what is sort of um, – if you had to describe the, the movie to someone who, um, you know, knows nothing about it, which is, at this point, most people as they're, you know, hearing Everybody. these interviews, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, how would you pitch it to an audience and, you know, what would you compare it to and, you know, what you would want people to expect from it? Um, so it's the story of a man named Moses who, um, like in the past has done some, has done some very bad things and he's, he's killed 13 innocent people. And so when we meet him in the movie, he thinks that he's seen God and, and talked with God or talked with Jesus. And, um, he thinks that Jesus is telling him that if he kills 13 innocent bad people like pedophiles um then that will it'll like even out and he can like he can work his way to heaven you know like it his sins will will disappear if he can like even them out and he does he's it's like it's a creepy concept because he doesn't see it as like it now i've killed 26 people you know he sees it as like well you know i did these 13 bad things and so if i do 13 bad things to 13 like bad people then it'll like even out mm -hmm. so he has this like really twisted weird mentality um and so my character is a teenage runaway who um, 
uh, it comes from a, a hard background of like abusive parents and abusive boyfriend and it's kind of on the run and doesn't know where to go. It's very like very young, naive girl. And so she, uh, she like very obliv- obliviously takes refuge with Moses, who she like barely knows, um, like just in his house. And she's just like hanging out in his house and doesn't really know like what he does during the day. And he tells her like, I paint houses and stuff. And she really thinks that he just goes and paints houses and doesn't know what he really does. And um, so it's like, I feel like it, it deals with a lot of topics that a lot of filmmakers are like, kind of scared to talk about like it it deals with like poverty and domestic violence and a lot of these things that you don't really see in films that often and um it's just like it's 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 like really interesting because I mean I think we've all kind of known somebody that's like a little bit too religious where like I mean I I think that like beliefs in religion and stuff is like a very good wholesome thing but I think we've all like met that person that's like going too far with it like I used to know this girl in elementary school who said like she felt like she could do whatever she wanted and like run out in front of traffic and stuff because she went to church and the church will protect her and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so I think like there is there's a a limit with like religion and stuff and you can like you know like there there is a line and if you cross it like it it can get like a little creepy it's like it definitely like um deals with that and uh it's like it's it's very it's very odd because there's there's a lot of scenes that's like we're doing something like you know really really weird and creepy but like you can just like hear us doing it and the visuals are like on a picture of Jesus and just stuff like that so it's like it's really weird and twisted but um it's it's really great it, it's a film that makes you think and um uh, I think it's gonna do really well and uh, yeah I think that yeah I think it's gonna do really well <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of interesting because, I mean, Joe and you, you know, you're both uh, born and raised Utah, and that is a Mm -hmm. very, um, I would say, it's fair to say a conservative uh, religious state overall. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And so there's um, sort of two ways you can go with that that I've noticed with a lot of my Utah friends, because I have a lot of Utah friends. uh, Yeah. And they either, like, stick with it and stick with uh, the Mormon thing and are just, you know, rocking and rolling with that. Uh, without mm-hmm. any, you know, tea or caffeine, but Monster Energy drinks. So they're either going that route or they're going, like, sort of hard the other direction and just, like, really, like, scathing, like, um, uh, I want I don't want to say anti-religion, but a, sort of like a big pushback. And uh, that's mm-hmm. what I've noticed. I think there were, uh, especially when I'm looking at, you know, Joe's other work, where I've got a manual song and this, you've got very yeah. much, um, like, a, a pushback against religion, which, um, you know, makes sense given, like, the, you know, environment that he grew up in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of, like, a strange film, like, for me to be a part of, because I'm kind of, like, in between that. Like, um, I wasn't raised, like, like going to church and stuff, like, pers- like you know, like, immediately, like, my me- immediate family, but, like, my like extended family like most of them if not all of them are like very very LDS and so like I'm definitely around that community a lot and like I do think that there's like something higher than us you know like I like believe in God and stuff like that but at the same time I'm not like we have to go to church every Sunday and follow the rules and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and I'm like I feel like I'm a lot more like wild than my like you know very LDS like friends and stuff like that you know and just like the way that I like dress and stuff like that and so I'm kind of like in the middle of that. Like I'm not like going off the deep end, but at, this, but at the same time, I don't like go to church every Sunday and stuff like that. So I'm like middle ground right there. And so it's like, it was like funny, like for me to do this movie where you can, I feel like it's a movie where you can like see both sides of it. And um, yeah. And, and probably my uh, very religious uh, relatives might not, <laughs> might not see it. <laughs> oh yeah. No, this I is the kind of thing I, that um... I, hope, I, I hope that some of them do. Um, I hope that some of them will want to watch it, but like my grandparents, I don't think, I don't think would appreciate it that much. <laughs> I mean, it's basically just season five of Dexter. Like if they could handle season five of, oh, wait, no, season six. No, season five was the really I don't, terrible I don't know season. What Dexter is. Oh, Dexter. It's a, What's Dexter? It's a TV show about a serial killer. And there's one oh. season where he fights like a serial killer who's killing people because God told him to. And like that's oh, the entire okay. season. Yeah, that's. That's the very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was a uh, it was a Showtime series. It was like uh, really big for yeah, a few I years. Yeah, I think I think I've like heard of that. I just didn't know like what it was. Yeah. So I would say it's like uh, it's like season six of Dexter, which is 
you know, one of the one of the better seasons. So, you know, the film has that going for it. Um, and mm-hmm. then, you know, as far as like the religion thing, like I um, was in a very religious household growing up, um, you know, took the Bible to school with me uh, when I was younger. And um, oh, really? yeah, so I, I would say I was a uh, pretty religious as a kid and um, then developed um, like a mixture of apathy and curiosity towards religion. But I'm definitely not uh, not hostile towards it. Um, mm mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have gone to uh, some, some Mormon services. I've got, like, four copies of the Book of Mormon uh, because I'm very polite and friendly. And so whenever the missionaries would come to my door, I'd invite them in. and We would just hang out for a while. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. my, my high school music teacher, uh, she's, a, she's a Mormon. And so, you know, I would go over to her house for piano lessons. So, you know, I, I the, the LDS community, I think, is, um, I think, in many ways, a tapped more harshly than they deserve to be in terms yeah. of uh, Christian theology where, you know, I understand there are a number of people who are just like uh, the book, you know, who believe that the Book of Mormon is, is blasphemy for adding like additional stuff to the Bible. I w- I'm not going to get into that debate of it. Um, but what I would say in terms of the, you know, the people themselves are some of the nicest people I've ever met. Some of the yeah, kindest. Absolutely. And like, you know, you've got like crazies in any uh, religious faction, but in mm-hmm. terms of like, um, like per capita, like if I run into someone and they're a Mormon, I'm more likely to have a really pleasant exchange than mm-hmm. with, say, a Southern Baptist. Um, yeah. And that's just like, that's just real talk. And like, you know, I've uh-huh. gone to Southern Baptist services. I've gone to Mormon services. And just like, who's going to be nicer to me? Who's going to like, you know, scare me less? It's actually more often than not the Mormons. And just like, yeah, I, that's I just real talk. I agree with that. <laughs> You know, uh, but, you know, I'm not trying to um, I'm not trying to, like, you know, judge an entire group by a couple of bad apples because, um, like, you know, I know some people who um, who love Queen and are terrible people. That that doesn't mean all Queen fans are terrible. But, yeah. you know, as a whole, I've just um, uh-huh. LDS folks have been have been really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do like their um, like the morals and stuff that they've had. And those have definitely like even though I didn't grow up like going to church and stuff. Like they, their like morals have definitely like, you know, rubbed off on me. Like I don't like smoke, I don't drink, I don't like do any of that stuff. Um, and I think that's like mostly due to because I was like, you know, raised by people who don't do that, you know, and like they always like told me like, you know, don't do that, like that's bad for you, you know. And like I feel like a lot of people that just have parents and grandparents and stuff that just like are drinking all the time, like they're gonna like drink all the time and <laughs> stuff like that. But um. Like, I don't, like, do that type of stuff because, like, I just wasn't, like, raised that way and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, I do, like, appreciate that a lot, that they have, like, you know, morals and they want to, like, you know, they're nice to everybody <laughs> and stuff like that. And, like, I have met, like, you know, people that are very religious and, like, aren't nice, like, the kids I, like, went to school with. Like, mm-hmm. I went to school with, like, a lot of, like, bullies and stuff, and I think most of most of those girls, like, were... LDS, but they were like still bullies. So like, it's not like it's not like everybody yeah, is. Not like but um, is. my like family and a lot of my friends are, um, like, you know, the type to like go uh, seek out somebody just to like be nice to them or make them feel like welcomed and stuff like that. And I think that I think that we need more people in the world like that. Now you know, living in Utah, like, what's the percentage of people where like is basically everyone LDS and there's like a couple Catholics? Like how, how is it when you like run into someone of a different faith out in the wild? Out in the wild. Um, I don't really know how to answer that. I feel like, I mean, I, I feel like it's not as like LDS dominated as people like think it is. Um, I'm just picturing my like close group of friends. And I think maybe about half of them are like very LDS and, the others are like not and then there's some that like were like when they were like younger and stuff and now that we're like getting to be like in our early 20s have kind of strayed from it a little bit but i um, guess that's what i'm saying it's like it feels like ev- almost everyone in utah from my, from my experience like basically everyone i've met is either lds or former lds it just, well it just, yeah i mean th- there's a lot of them like I, I wouldn't say like every single person but um it is like i mean it's it's like the dominant like religion here so like I, a lot of people are, yeah, but, like, I wouldn't say, like, every single person. Right. But I guess, I guess it's fascinating to me because I, you know, uh, lived in the, the Midwest. I lived in um, the, the North, and I live I now live in the South. And mm-hmm. coming from those different places, um, 
there is um you know there there's definitely um a lot more catholics in the north and the midwest than there are in the south uh what i've mm -hmm. noticed but uh there definitely seems to be um uh, much more like butting heads and warring factions between uh you know different segments of christianity um and you know everyone else uh, telling you know the other people that they're they're wrong with their interpretation of the bible um mm -hmm. and so it's it's interesting um just that utah has sort of maintained uh, to a large degree like like this is the mormon state most you know the, there you know there's mormons here in nashville there's mormons you know back in in cleveland but just it's interesting like how the congregation has been able to like maintain and like you know keep that power in that one like location where just everyone is sort of together as like one unit like to me that's a real a fascinating social phenomenon that it's maintained for so long mm -hmm. yeah so you know that that was just uh my my thoughts on on that and just um you know trying trying to get you know the inside scoop uh you know from from a Utah native. Yeah. <laughs> so uh what um you you said you don't you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do drugs. Uh you know neither do I. I'm I'm sort of um a famous outlier for that. What mm -hmm. do you what is your like venting and like working with uh you know do you have a vice that you struggle with? Like, what is, you know, is like the Achilles heel that you work with? Because, I mean, we all have our flaws. Like, you know, for me, it's maybe, um, for me, it's maybe overeating. Uh, it used to be, you know, girls because I did the hair metal thing. And um, <laughs> it was, it was very easy to meet them after shows. So that was, that was my vice. I don't do that anymore. I'm happily married. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I ate an entire tub of rice pudding today. So I'll admit I still have huh. my vices. But, like, what's, like, the thing that, you know, gets you? And also, how do you deal with the, the peer pressure? Because I know uh, in the entertainment industry, everyone wants you to do drugs with them. <laughs> Everyone's like, come on, snort this line of Coke with me. Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, so, you know, how do you deal with that peer pressure? And, uh, you know, what, you know, do you have a vice? Do you have something that you work with that's difficult? Um... I don't, I honestly, like, I can't really think of any, like, right now. I think I, uh, I don't even know. I mean, I, I really like desserts a lot, but, like, I don't think I eat too much of them because I, like, have a lot of self-control. And also, you know? you're, you're pretty skinny, um, so I, I don't, I don't see that as uh, an issue. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like I, I used to, like, when I was, like, in junior high, I'd, like, you know, I'd always, like, buy, like, candy bars and stuff to, like, bring to my classes I don't know like um but I like I feel like that was just junior high I don't I feel like I've I have a lot of like self-control and stuff like that mm -hmm. um yeah I can't really think of anything like that but in terms of uh like peer pressure and stuff I think that I I'm pretty good with that too and that's just come with like age and stuff because I remember when I was like 12 or 13 you know you hear stories about like people going to like parties and stuff and people saying like come on like do drugs or whatever and when I was like 12 or 13 I was like so terrified of that because I just like I used to be like a lot more insecure and I I remember thinking like I hope that I don't end up in that situation because I you know there's there's no way that I could like just not do it because like I just really wanted to like be cool and stuff like that and I never got into one of those situations but I was so afraid that I was going to because I was like you know if they're like pressuring me like I, I don't know how I would ever like stand up for myself but um, now, like, at this age, I don't have that mentality anymore. I think that, like, I wouldn't, like, hang out with people that would, like, do that and stuff. Like, if I, if I like, went to a party with, like, people and they were doing that, like, I wouldn't continue to hang out with them. And, like, um, I just, like, don't, like, seek out those type of people to, like, associate with, I guess. Um, so, like, I feel like that wouldn't really be a problem like now um do you worry about of, uh, if you became more successful if that became an issue like you go to the hollywood party and everyone's like do a line of coke do you worry that you would end up doing that no because like just at, at this age and this like uh just level of my like life and career and stuff i i am like a lot more like confident and i do like stand up for myself and stuff and so like i don't i don't like worry about that because like, again, like, if I was hanging out with people that, like, invited me to a party and stuff, and then I, like, went and that happened, like, I wouldn't hang out with those people anymore. And so, um, like, it wouldn't be like, oh, no, they're not going to think I'm cool because it's, like, I don't think they're cool, you know? And I think that I used to I used to think stuff like that, like, uh, if I was interacting with, like, another person, it's, like, they were always, you know, like, by default, like, right. 
and I was always like, oh no, like, like they're, you know, like they're always like right or whatever. And I have to like please them or whatever. But now I've like, I just kind of, I kind of gotten this like, you know, level of, of like conceit <laughs> almost like, um, I kind of, I think of myself as like, you know, like I don't need to worry about like somebody thinking like I'm weird because like maybe I think that they're weird and like maybe that's what they should be worried about, you know? Um, like I think that I've, I've kind of like come into, into that part of my life, which is like really weird for me. Cause, um, I mean, I used to like, so I used to be like so opposite of that, but I just like, it's just like flowing out of me now. And I think part of that is the release of Abigail hunting, um, because it got like so popular, like so fast. And that just gave me like so much like identity and stuff. Like I just went to a, a pre-production meeting like a month ago for a, a upcoming film and um like I walked in there and there was all these people like at a like desk there were like you know 10 of them um and I just like walk in and uh I sat down and they go oh sorry like we we didn't mean for this to be like such an intimidating looking setup and I just said to them like oh you're you're gonna be the ones that are gonna be intimidated by me in about five minutes <laughs> and like I didn't I didn't like force my this it's great because like I didn't force myself to say that I wasn't like I'm gonna you know, be confident. It just like flowed out of me. And I just like, especially like coming from like, you know, somebody that like was bullied in school and all this stuff. It just like means so much to me that I've like gained that much confidence where I just like want to go in there and say that. So, um, yeah, going back to your original question, I'm rambling, but, um, I don't think that would be a problem now, the peer pressure thing. Um, if I, if I did get intimidated by that, it would only be for a short time. And I think I have a lot of like friends and people that are like on my side. And so even if I got like intimidated by that, I have people that would like, you know, help me stand up for myself. So what would you say? And I, this is a question that I'm sure you've gotten asked before, but I think we could actually pull a good answer. What would be like the, um, the dream project for you? The, the magnum opus, like, you know, the like career defining role, the thing that you would be like most proud of, like, what do you envision that being like in your head? Like, what the genre would be, what the part would kind of be like, what would you in your perfect, you know, world Mm -hmm. be like the ultimate film vehicle for you? Um, I, I have gotten that asked a lot. I have gotten asked that a lot. Um, the answer is a very extremely dialogue heavy period piece. That would be the bomb. Um, it could be a horror thing. It could be like, you know, like a ghost or a witch or something like that. It could be, but honestly, it doesn't have to be. It could be like a Shakespeare, uh, like a film adaptation of a Shakespeare play um, or something like that. Just a, a very, very dialogue heavy period piece with a lot of big dramatic clothes and um, starring um, me and Kate Winslet because Kate Winslet's like, one of the main like people like why I'm in the film industry because when I was like 15 I always like wanted to be like her and stuff like that and so she's like always been a big inspiration for like me as an actress so it's like if if, like me and Kate Winslet were like the leads or maybe I'm like more of the lead right (laughs) well she she plays the uh the the older actress who the mom who gets the best supporting actress nod but you're the one who's the lead who gets the best actress yeah that would be great and like a very dialogue heavy uh period piece and like specifically if if i could like pick the era i like i like most period like there's not really a period that i wouldn't want to do but i would pick like like late 1800s to like early 1900s like you know the year 1900 like around there um because that's when the clothes got like really big and dramatic and like rich colors and stuff like that and i so really you're like saying you want to be kathy and weather and heights um i haven't actually seen that but um i know that it's a famous book so yeah something like that like <laughs> a like a um what's that one called sense and sensibility like right. that type of thing or like pride and prejudice or like um, Hamlet. <laughs> I don't know, like one of those just like really dialogue heavy uh, period pieces with with the big with the big clothes and um, like with with somebody like famous that I'm like inspired by um, in it. That would be like that would that would be the the dream one that I would choose. So, like as far as uh, your plans for the future, you've got like the um, the couple films in the pipeline. Are you are you thinking beyond that, or is it just you know one step at a time? Um, I, I'm not really one to think like too far into the future, but I definitely, I'm, I also, I'm a singer and I definitely like want to do more with that. Like it's always kind of been like a side thing, but, um, I want to like get more into singing and stuff like that. What kind Um, of music? Yeah. 
Uh, I do like pop music a lot or just like, I, I, I feel like I, I have a three octave range so I can kind of like, I, I, I like to think that I can sing anything, but um, I used to, I used to do like musical theater pieces because I was in musical theater, but now mm-hmm. I feel like my uh, voice has kind of changed to more of like a, a poppy radio <laughs> voice. So um, pop music and uh, stuff like that. And I have a friend who like, right he makes like edm and so we're like writing a song together and i'm making like the melody and like the lyrics and he's writing like the the backtrack which is like a edm thing Mm -hmm. and i think it'll be really cool like eventually (laughs) when we like actually finish that so are you working on that now um yeah but it's just kind of like a fun thing you know like I, i feel like things are like really fun and then you like make them into like a career and then it like it's still fun but it kind of like loses a little bit of the magic and so i don't really like want to make music like a career like part of a career at all i just like want to keep it like a side fun thing because then the magic will always like stay in it because i mean acting there's there's always going to be magic in acting but like you know when i when i because i've been acting since i was 11 and like when i was like that age um i didn't even really know if i wanted to like stick with it as an adult and stuff and so i just kind of like did it for fun and there was this like there's this level of of magic there and it's it's still like acting still has magic in it but now that i like am an adult and it's like 10 years later and it's like okay like this is what i'm doing as a career it's like it is like a little bit different like it, it's not it doesn't feel the same as i did it did when i was like that it's just because now it's like okay this is like a job and i have to do it <laughs> like um and it's it's still like i'm really lucky to be like where i am and i i still love acting but it is like it's different when you like do it as a career like it's ex- like you know, and not like, it's just a fun thing. So I think I, I want to keep the music as just a fun thing, at least like for a while. But um, I definitely like to do more with it. So the the music, you just, you, you like sort of the sanctity of it just, you know, being a hobby, not the pressure on it, which I mean, I get like, um, mm-hmm. I've, I've gotten very burnt out from music as a career just because there's, there's, and I know you know this when in entertainment, there's so much behind the scenes stuff that just makes it not yeah. fun. Yeah, and exactly. At, at a certain point, you're just like, is this even fun to do anymore? Am I am I making enough money for this to be worth it? And mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. And you really have to, you know, weigh you know how much you love it, where your heart is, yeah. uh, and where I've, your passion I've is. Yeah, I've definitely seen stuff like when I was younger, um, like early teens, even. Um, I'd like get together with people and like make these little movies, like just for fun, not to show anybody, just mm-hmm. like just because I wanted to act something out and like nowadays like I've had a couple of friends like suggest that like hey maybe we should just make a little like fun short film about whatever I'm like I don't want to do that you know like I, I have to do that <laughs> all, all the time I don't want to I don't want to like you know do that for fun um and so like that's different you know I used to I used to want to do it for fun like I used to want to do it all the time right um but like now that I do it all the time I'm just like I don't want to do this all the time <laughs> is it is it so, still your one true passion oh yeah yeah absolutely um I yeah like you were saying I think that any any career, especially in entertainment or like, you know, sports or anything like that. That's like a long, you know, uh, a long, like, you know, career that's all, you know, glamorous looking and all that stuff. I think anything you do, like acting your music and whatever, uh, is like, it's going to turn into that at some point, but you just like, at the end of the day, like I do still love acting. And I think that there are like, I'm still like somewhat new to the, the game of doing, um, feature films and I think that like I I just me just as a person in general it takes me like a long time to like get used to stuff and I feel like now I'm finally like used to it and I feel like um things are a lot easier when I like know what to expect and stuff and so I think the next the next features that I do I think will be like more fun but like it it's taken me like a while to like get used to like okay like what is this I mean I've acted for a long time but like feature films are a whole whole different animal like you can do like a lot of theater and a lot of short films and think you're like really experienced and then you get onto a feature and you're like what's this like it's it's very different but well yeah it's i a, think it's i'm a, finally like used to it yeah it's a different uh different mindset different set of skills and mm-hmm. that um it's like when michael jordan tried to play baseball and he just like wasn't physically built to be optimal for the sport and had to retrain his body and like change his muscle mass and just work on different muscles uh, allow different muscles to become stronger and others to become weaker in order to become optimized for the sport and then when he went back to basketball he had to turn his baseball body into a basketball body it's just it's a different physique and so mm-hmm. with acting it's you know a different skill set we're just like with theater 
you're playing to the person in the back of the crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. And with, uh, you know, film, you're playing to the camera that's two feet in front of you. And yeah. that is a, a wildly different skill set in terms mm -hmm. of, like, what you have to do with your face, the tonality, your body language. Yeah. And, and even, like, going from, like, a lot of short films to the feature films, it's, like, it's so different. Like, the, the preparation is different. Like, everything is, like... It's like a whole different animal. And then when you go outside of Utah, like, you know, the, the L.A. industry is, like, very different. And then, like, like I shot one on the East Coast, and that was very different. And, like, I think that's why it's kind of taken me, like, so long to, like, get used to doing features is because, like, they haven't, like, been the same. Because, like, I did one in Utah, and then I did one in California, and it was, like, so different. And then I did one in Vegas, and it was different. And I did one on the East Coast, and it was different. So I'm, like... I can now I feel like I'm kind of used to like, you know, what the possibilities are. And um, I just like I know a lot of little things that I'm like, OK, like I'm going to do this next time. Or I'm going to make it mm -hmm. more fun by doing this or whatever next time. And um, one of the things that's like really hard about shooting out of state. I mean, it's, it's really cool like to get, you know, flown to this other state and be put up in this cool city or whatever. But um, it's really hard because like you don't know anybody there. You know, it's like you're like. I'm just like in this other state and like, I'm like, I don't know people <laughs> here and um, like, Oh no, like I'm by myself. But um, I have like a lot of people that like have said like, Oh, you're going to be filming in like whatever city, like, Oh, like come out there and we can like do stuff. And I kind of like, haven't like taken them up on that, but I'm like, now I'm like going to, because then I like, won't have to do the whole thing by myself. <laughs> like, right. it's, like, it gets like kind of, it gets like crazy. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, me as a musician, you know, who's uh you know, done some stuff on the road and just like live the road warrior life you know i i know so many people all over the world where i don't feel like truly like foreign in a lot of places where i'm like i know somebody nearby or feel like i know somebody nearby <laughs> but um i also you know realize like you know you're younger than me you're like um what nine years younger than me so you haven't um you know lived that road warrior life uh, quite as much yet and so i understand like you know when you're first venturing out into that stuff um you know how how just you know different and weird it can seem and how foreign it is when you're just going out there for the first time but um mm -hmm. i would say just have fun with it and yeah. uh you know treat every new city as like a new adventure and mm -hmm. um just you know go balls to the wall go for it and it's like yeah screw it i don't know anybody i'll meet some people i mean yeah. uh, like one of the things i did was um you know, I would like find excuses to talk to somebody like at a yeah. bar or a show and uh, just, you know, like something about like, oh, you know, I like your outfit and just, you know, you know, striking up a conversation or just like, you know, noticing someone is wearing a Chicago Bulls jersey and you talk about Michael Jordan, just whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. finding some sort of common ground. Um, so I want I want to give you a gotcha question. Uh, 13th Cross or Abigail Haunting, which is better? <laughs> Abigail haunting. Shh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said it. But Abigail haunting. I just have to. Okay, here's why. Here's why. Abigail haunting never cuts away from my character. So I'm kind of biased. I have to say that. You got more screen um, time. Oh yeah. Well, and also, I mean, like, uh, the the director and the DP of Abigail haunting are both like multi Emmy award winners and have been like in the industry for like a long time. And I mean, like, I mean that comes like. You, you know, like you, you learn from experience. I mean, I, I watch like audition tapes of myself, like when I was like 15 and mm -hmm. I'm like, I was like not near like what I can do now, you know, like skill wise. I'm like, you know, like, Oh, that was like really fast. So that was like, whatever. I have this tape from when I, it was like one of my very first movie auditions. And, um, I like, I, I, I thought for some reason that I like, because I come from theater, I guess that's why um, I, I thought that I like should use my hands or whatever. And there was no place in the monologue to use my hands. And so like, you can just, you can just see this like awkward, like I'm just like doing this for like no reason. <laughs> just Cause like, I thought I should use my hands or whatever. But see, like, you know, that was like six years ago. And so like, you know, you, you learn things. And I think, I think that was the case with, with these Abigail hunting people had been in the industry for a lot longer of a time. And, I think for this being Joe's first feature, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I know people that are on like their fourth or fifth feature that like is like really bad, you know? <laughs> so right. like, um, I think, I think he has a lot of talent and it's, it's a fantastic movie, but, um, I mean, if you're going to just like say that, um, which one is better? Like, I mean, Abigail hunting, but, uh, I, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything, anything, uh, bad toward the 13th cross i think the 13th cross is amazing and i'm very lucky to have been able to 
be in it. Well, see, there you go. I think you just you just sold it to the audience because you gave an honest answer, but then said, "But this is still great. Go see it." So, yeah, I think I think you sold Thirteenth Cross well, uh, and I think that's. I don't think I'm going to get better than that gotcha question. I think it's a good point to sign off. So please um, plug your socials. Tell the people where they can find you. I mean, it'll be linked in the description, but still, tell it for the for the sake of the cool. audio listeners. Cool. Um, so I'm on Instagram at at Chelsea Amber Yurkovitz and Twitter at Chelsea J Actress and Facebook Chelsea Yurkovitz. And uh, feel free to follow me on any of those because um, I will be posting release date info for the 13th Cross and because uh, we don't have a release date yet, but when as soon as I know it, I will put it on there so you guys can all see when and where to watch it. And yeah, yeah, and I will. Um, actually, I don't know if I'll, I'll. Yeah, I won't watch with the wife. So, and I have the link to it. So I don't know if that's going to be relevant to me. But hey, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll be able to share it on my socials too. So there'll be that. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great chat, and um, yeah, yeah, we'll talk to you soon.